back your homes or restore your dead to life. But perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. When have you ever done something that wasn't in your interest, but solely for the benefit of the family? The day that you were born. I wanted to carry you into the sea and let the waves wash you away. Instead, I let you live, and I brought you up as my son. You won't cast a rock. It is mine, by right. And I would let myself be consumed by maggots before mocking the family name and making you heir to cast rock. You who killed your mother to come into the world, you are an ill-made, spiteful little creature. Men's laws give you the right to bear my name and display my color, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. I've always hated Tyrion. He killed his king. As did I. Do you know the last order the Mad King gave me? To bring him your head. All that... my life, you've wanted me dead. You're no son of mine. I am your son. In the book series, it is explained that Tywin's wife, Joanna Lannister, was King Aerys' love lust. In reference to Joanna, Aerys drunkenly joked about how it was a pity that the tradition of the first night, which allowed the king to sleep with new brides, was banned. Sir Barristan Selmy also seemed to corroborate that Aerys took unwanted liberties with Joanna during her bedding ceremony. It is not clear what was done to Joanna and even if he raped her during that moment, the time period does not line up with Tyrion's birth. However, Aerys' continued lust for Joanna was a constant source of friction between he and Tywin. It's plausible that at some point after Tywin married Joanna, King Aerys got his way and slept with Joanna Lannister, either by force, blackmail, or otherwise. The popular theory is that Tyrion may have been the result of that union. People who knew Tywin and Joanna's relationship said the only time Tywin ever smiled was when Joanna was present. Tywin truly loved her, but unfortunately for him, she died giving birth to Tyrion. In spite of Joanna's death, fans wonder if Tywin's love for Joanna was so great, why did he hate Tyrion? Because of the hatred between Tywin and the Mad King, Ares made Tywin's oldest son Jaime a member of the Kingsguard, thus preventing him from marrying taking property, and having children, which overall means he cannot carry on Tywin's branch of House Lannister, meaning that Tyrion is the only one who can legitimately carry forward the House successors. As you see in the previous scenes, Tywin constantly refuses to consider Tyrion his heir, which seems odd given his effort on family and legacy. In hindsight, it seems Tywin wants to be respected, and doesn't think having a dwarf for a son is respectable. Tywin also blames Tyrion for Joanna dying while giving birth to him. But this could all be an acknowledgement by Tywin that Tyrion is not, legitimately, his son. Tyrion's physical appearance provides a few similarities to that of Targaryens. The Targaryens are known for their silver hair and purple eyes, and in the books, Tyrion looks a bit different from the show. His hair color is described as pale blonde that's almost white. His eyes are also different colors, one is green and the other black. Tyrion's appearance contrasts with that of his older siblings, Jaime and Cersei, who both have typical Lannister features. They have green eyes and golden blonde hair. Siblings are definitely not always identical in shared features, yet since Tywin and Joanna were first cousins, it makes it a bit odd that Tyrion has a black eye and whitish hair. So Tywin likes to insult Tyrion while also insinuating that he isn't his son. One of Tywin's famous insults declares this to Tyrion. You are an ill-made, devious, disobedient, spiteful little creature full of envy, lust, and low cunning. It sounds like a nag at the fact that he is a dwarf, but what if it really means Tyrion was the product of an unwanted relationship between Ares and Joanna, because if true, he was conceived in a sick way and his birth resulted in Joanna's death, which was the one person Tywin could go about life smiling for. If we take a step back and look at how Catelyn felt about Jon Snow, it bears a keen resemblance to Tywin's feelings for Tyrion. In A Feast for Crows, Tyrion's sister talks to Jaime and says, 
I once said to your father that Tyrion is Tywin's son, not you. He would not speak to me for half a year. The quote shows Tyrion's intellect is similar to Tywin, but Tywin wanted nothing to link to him and his dwarf son. Tywin's hatred of Tyrion womanizing is also curious. Ares was known to solicit prostitutes often, much like Tyrion does before he meets Shay. Tywin hated this about Tyrion, and maybe it is because it reminds him of how Ares was with his wife, and Tyrion may have inherited that trait from King Ares. The Targaryens were known to have dreams of dragons, and be intrigued by fire. Tyrion has this in common too. This is from a conversation with Jon in A Game of Thrones. When I was your age, I used to dream of having a dragon of my own. Oh yes, even a stunted, twisted, ugly little boy can look down over the world when he's seated on a dragon's back. I used to start fires in the bowels of Casterly Rock and stare at the flames for hours, pretending they were dragon fire. Sometimes I'd imagine my father burning. At other times, my sister. Don't look at me that way, bastard. I know your secret. You've dreamt the same kind of dreams. Also, in A Dance with Dragons, Tyrion crosses paths with the Red Priest, Makoro. Makoro can see the future in the flames, and his predictions are distinctly more accurate than Melisandre. He tells Tyrion that he sees dragons old and young, true and false, bright and dark, and you, a small man with a big shadow, snarling in the midst of it all. In A Game of Thrones, Tyrion is the one that gives Bran the schematics for a specially designed saddle like his own, that will allow Bran to ride a horse. This detail is purely guesswork, but some people believe Tyrion will utilize his own saddle once again, this time to ride a dragon instead of a horse. Finally, in A Storm of Swords, Daenerys has an inner monologue reading. The dragon has three heads. There are two men in the world who I can trust, if I can find them. I will not be alone then. We will be three against the world, like Aegon and his sisters. We have finally received confirmation of Jon Snow's lineage, and it's pretty plausible to believe Jon is the second of the three heads. And now with Tyrion's comfortability around dragons, or should I say, their comfortability around him, it is likely he is the third head. If you want to learn more about the three heads of the dragon, you can click here or on the link in the description. Let me know what you guys think about Tyrion and the theory that he is a secret Targaryen. Make sure to subscribe. I will be announcing the giveaway winner on tomorrow's video. See you soon.